Hello folks, hope you all had a good nice Christmas and like looking forward to a prosperous new year. Right, today we're going to have a look at today's post bag. Right, which was going to be another Russian. An Oscar Emil, 3000. A uh, Ronda 785 movement. And set British Army leather gloves. Oh, yeah. So, out of the way, let's have a look at the uh, this is Oscar Emil. I'm not sure if it's cesium or 3000. It says 3000 on the back. Diver watch. Titanium case and bracelet. Very, very nice. The only thing I'm really, really peeved about on this flight is they've stuck a really crappy Myota movement in it. Whereas the other Oscar Emil, um, the Houston, has got, like, you know, possibly the best chronograph movement that Myota make. So, what the heck, that Oscar Emil? Like, you know, it's a bit naughty. Um, uh, <sighs> Slide that on there. And I'm not going to show you, like, you know, what, what a thing he does, like, you know. Um, I should be able to do some loom on that. That's the only really good thing I would say for this as well, is the loom is really, I mean, it's holding up quite well in quite bright lit room. So, there we go, Oscar Mill 3000 stroke, or series 3000 stroke, cesium or whatever it is like, you know, I mean, it's very comfortable, quite manly, chunky watch, quite pleased with that, I quite like Oscar Mill, so. Okay, here we have Commandierski. Screw down crown, 80 mil lug. Uh, it is a common and garden foster. Well, it's a general ski. Um, well, Admiral ski, I do beg his pardon, calling it a general ski. It's an Admiral ski. Uh, you know, I've been, to I've been told by some that this is known as the Black Sea Admiral ski. Uh, you know, because the other one I've got is um, supposedly the Vladivostok based one but I have no idea and it's all like you know. now this one has got the very pleasing square sort of um, shape to it like you know like a rounded square or rectangle okay, it's beautiful tired the loom on the hands unfortunately is a little bit tired um, unlike other ones I've seen of this it doesn't say created in Russia uh, you know, um, it, what it does say is like um, well, there's absolutely nothing down there, but there is a round, there is a swirly B there. So this says to me this is post-Soviet, possibly. Right? It's also got that very unusual bezel. This is the second one I've had with this bezel. I don't see many of these around, and I haven't seen one on Marinome in that shape either. So I don't know what that's going on. If you look, it's got like little anchors around it. Date wheel works, wind works. It is, you know, I put it on this Soviet strap because it didn't come with a strap. And if you look, the contour of it is it's perfect. So it's staying on this strap. Right, let's put this on. We shall have a look. Da, 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 da. There you go. Look at that. And we that sweet. Right, we shall move on to the quick one on the move, the Harley Ronda movement. Well, I'm not going to take this out because, like, the whole aspect of uh, watchkeeping, watchmaking, and stuff and stuff like that is to um, keep things clean. And yeah, it's, it's a nice little movement holder. Tiny little Harley Ronda movement so that is for ba -ba -ba. Uh, 
Yeah, we're going back into here, which is a very, very heavy rose gold. I mean, this has got hole markings on it as well, so um, it's, it's not a pretend one. Uh, this, this is a Klaus Kobeck. Quite an expensive watch. It's Klaus Kobeck Entrepreneur Rose Gold. So, um, and this, like, when it's light on, is a very, very solid, manly sort of um, piece. I, uh, I've been trying to get this fixed since I got it for quite a while back. Uh, all I've been getting, see, the writing on these movements is like uh, there's, a, there's a little identifier that's 705, 785 and all that, 505s and things. And what it is, I've been buying 785s and I've been getting sent um, 705s because the silly buggers couldn't bloody read it. Oh, that will be hopefully something I might video as well when I'm doing that. Right, what was the last thing? Oh, oh yes. Here we go. I'm not going to pause it for this. Like, uh, like you know, how about that? Proper set. Got British Army NATO number. These are the ones. These are what you call bouncer gloves or pitman gloves. I mean, you know, you whack somebody with that bit of leather and you know, like, you know they will. They're bloody big as well, like, you know, because I've got big hands and I had to measure them to get them right. But the uh, fingers are right up the top. Not too much on the thumb. Very, very soft. Like, you know, it's almost like a kid leather. Very tough as well and very warm. These cost seven pounds. Right? You can see them on eBay for seven quid. You cannot buy a better pair of gloves. And, uh, and they're brilliant for light motorcycling as well because they're completely waterproof. Uh, see if we can find an 8 number. Uh, uh, these are 2017 issued ones. Uh, just uh, Type 2 combat gloves. And there's the 8 number at the bottom there. Across there. Bit hard to see, like you know. Anyway, what we'll do is we will go back up top and we'll have a little, have a little um, reflection on everything else. The final thing I was going to mention, I uh, was this: I've been messing around with these slavers, which I thought were slavers. It turns out this is a pole jot stadium, and a very, very desirable piece as well. Now I've got to try and find a crystal for that. Because that's one of the things that's wrong. And of course, I'm trying to put a slaver, because it says on the back of the movement, 2628, which is the same as the ones you see in that one. That's just a 2628. And of course, it wouldn't fit. I'm thinking to myself, well, what's going on here, Lloyd? You know? And of course, like, this is a pole jill 2628, which is not a slaver 2628. Um, I've been working on this one. I'm hoping that my, the movement for this one turns up this week. I'm looking forward to that one because that's that's the Slava TV. I it, I think they're a rip off of the Seiko TV because there's a Seiko TV look, looks very very similar to that. This one is going to go for a Barfist and Napfa. See if it frees everything up. That's a more modern Slava that is. Well, that's in very good condition that is for what it is. It just doesn't work. Um, I have found out that Slavas can be very weak. Um, you know, this one here is the automatic, and uh, it's very unusual because a lot of people have said to me they haven't seen one of these before. It's got a cracked glass, and the other night, uh, I think it was Christmas Eve, it started running for about an hour, and then it just stopped again, and it hasn't worked since. So, but when you like um, oscillate it, the second hand twitches. So I think it's got um, a gum dot cannon pin in. This one, I'm just, I've just i got a glass coming for. I'm not going to bother with a second hand for it. It looks good enough. I, you know, and I, I like that because that's like a dark burgundy over a light burgundy. I, you know, it's a very, very striking watch that is. It's very clean. I'm looking forward to wearing that one. Uh, and I mean, that's in, the case, that's in the, what I call highball case which is a bit higher than the Slaver 
AU10, which I've got recently. Right, and, I, and of course, this one I am desperate to get a new dial for because this is a Mokba 80 Olympic, and these are not common. Uh, these these are pretty because uh, the uh, 80 Olympics were boycotted as well, if I remember, by some countries because of the Soviets. Uh, you know, this this is quite an unusual watch. But this one, oh, I mean, look at that 1970s Soviet cheek. Oh, you just cannot beat it, can you? So, right, well, there we go. That's what I've been doing over the holiday season. I, you know, I've not been doing too much. So we'll go back up and we'll have to see what's going on. So, back up top. Uh, easy in hand, like, not for much longer. Um, Christmas Day was an absolute brilliant dinner. Like, Shana cooked uh, a whole salmon, like, and I mean, it was absolutely huge. Uh, it was incredibly tasty and I mean you know we were loaded on our plates and we did our best we did our duty the best we can even the cats are going oh my god not more fish <laughs> you know um, we, we just didn't have no room for like pudding and it was just a really nice day and I was, I'm grateful for those sort of days it was nice weather it, it was nice so I hope you all had a good Christmas day, like, you know, I mean, um, seeing family tomorrow, been on the phone with Steph, it turns out my granddaughter had a very good day, uh, that's good news as well, um, I can't really think of much else to say, like, like it's not many, many sales, like, I, I was expecting it to be all Boxing Day sales in Asda's and stuff like that, but there weren't, there was nothing, uh, we've had a bit of an injury today, um, like Gimli was asleep, asleep on Shana's um, computer chair and um, Gilly didn't see her so he's jumped up thinking he could um, like have a lay down because they like, like the computer chairs and um, he landed on Gimli his sister and of course Gimli's reared up at him and like I'll tell you like, it took me 15 seconds to separate them but he knocked the hell out of her tooth knocked it out completely and I, I, I will tell you something of it, really amazing what like, she did. She got, but uh, it was hurting her. I thought she had a broken jaw and I was really, really worried about that, right? So, like, she gets a, she gets a pause to her tooth, like a teeth, the broken tooth. And she just like, she made a little whimper and then she went and had to lean away in a drink. And it's like, wow. <laughs> like, you know, the, and of course we got the tooth. It was a perfectly healthy tooth, so it wasn't like it was on its way or something. But like there must have been some faults. But then Gilly is like the size of a, a medium-sized dog. He's really, really heavy. And the only reason he likes to sleep in my arms is because like you know I'm probably the only one that can actually hold him in my arms because I'm like this, like with him, like you know. And he's stretched out across me, like you know. And he, he just goes to sleep like a baby. So he's in disgrace. He's not allowed in. Like poor Bramble, like you know, he he cracked himself and he was out the window like a champagne cork, and he didn't come back for ages. Uh, poor Squidge was in here in a little box, like shaking, like you know, it wasn't very good. And like you know, Gilly has been like you know chastised quite heavily for it. And I, like, you know, I did say to Shana, like you know, if he had actually like done some really da bad damage to Gimli, like you know, would have had to consider perhaps like you know either rehoming him or um, something else, like you know, because we can't have that. You know, I know it was perhaps a mistake and all the rest of it, but this is not the first time they've been they've been fighting. You know, sibling rivalry, it goes on. We know that, but today was more of an accident than um, an intentional thing. Right, so um, we'll see how things go. He's done what he's done. He knows what he's done. He knows he's in trouble. Right, you know, so. We will take it from there. I don't want to start the new year losing a cat, another cat. Like, you know, I could do without that. But you know, like giving me such a sweet little thing. Like for us to get bashed up like that was just not on. 
Right, so I'm going to wish you all a happy new year. I'm sorry if I've missed anybody on the phone and stuff like that um, in the last few days. I am about. It's just that sometimes my phone, when I'm in the flat, it doesn't pick a signal up. And, you know, it's a bit of a noise. Um, like, if I'm on the phone at staff, like, you know, it goes straight to another voice box, which I can't access because I don't know what the pin is, because I forgot, because of my feeble brain. Um, uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's not, I mean, you know, next year's going to be the same as this year, really. Probably the move to Scotland will change things, but we shall see. Uh, you know, my eighth year of V-Sigging comes to an end. And, you know, and I'm even thinking of letting go the Royal Art of him. So we shall see where that one goes as well. Right, Happy New Year and all that, and catch you in the next one. Bye!